Hi everybody. Here we are once again. It's time for our encouraging words together. Thanks so much for tuning in with us today for this moment. This is our chance to pause wherever we are and to join our hearts together all across our campus and beyond as we seek the Lord, as we spend a moment together in his presence, as we listen to his word, as we ask him for help to apply it to our lives, as we share with him the concerns and burdens of our heart, turning to him, knowing that those who put their trust and hope in the Lord find in him all that's needed for this life. If you need hope or encouragement or peace today, it's there to be found, and we're going to draw near to the Lord right now together. Thanks so much for tuning in. In just a moment, I'm going to read a scripture to us from the first letter by John, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16 here in just a moment. This is a verse that we've talked about before, but uh, was also selected this week by my associate chaplain, Mary, Mary Myrink, who had a few thoughts of her own. Mary never likes to be on the camera necessarily, and so uh, she'll send these over with a little write-up, and, uh, and I still make the videos. In just a moment, I'll be glad to share with you uh, the scripture and a couple of her thoughts on it. But first, let me ask you this. Did you ever get a present that just blew you away? Maybe it was a birthday present. Maybe it was a Christmas gift. Maybe it was a wedding gift. Maybe it was um, something from a friend. For many of us, I know that uh, our children, we consider to be precious gifts from the Lord, and our lives are never the same again. What a wonder that is. Of course, I often say that having children is the hardest, most difficult, and best thing we ever do. What a blessing from the Lord. Mary, in her write-up, she talks about the best gift ever. Listen to the scripture verse. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16 says, This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. As Mary reflected on this scripture, she noted that the temptation is to think about Christ here laying down his life as if that were only the cross. Of course, the cross is the ultimate expression of how Jesus lays down his life for us. But Mary's point is, he laid down his life for us every day. That through daily service, daily care, daily interaction, um, amongst the people uh, that he lived and ministered to, there was continual and ongoing sacrifice. He gave continually. She says here that regardless of whether he was loved or hated, he gave. Whether he was alone or in a crowd, whether he was working as a carpenter or standing um, and preaching, whether he was restoring dignity to a woman caught in adultery or having a conversation with a Pharisee, no matter what action you want to describe to Jesus, he's looking for a way to serve, for a way to make a difference in the life of someone else. He lives a life of enduring service. This is how we know what love is ultimately expressed in the sacrificial decision to allow himself to be crucified for the sins of humanity. But he gave every day, day in and day out. And he calls us to love others in the same way. Of course, whenever we look to Jesus as our model, sometimes there is a tendency to push back and say, well, fine, that works for Jesus, but I'm not Jesus. What do we do then? Of course, here's the good news. When any person looks to Christ as Lord, when we call on the name of Jesus and surrender to him, not only is that a choice we're making, but we also receive the benefit of him taking up residence in our very being by his spirit. And suddenly, by the grace of God, we are filled with a love that is greater than our own. We are filled with a, a, the opportunity and energy and strength to serve when others would give up a long time ago. That doesn't mean life is easy, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it comes without sacrifice. But as we live surrendered to Christ, calling on him as Lord, he takes up residence within us, and he gives us 
the strength, the peace, the joy, the comfort, the patience, the love that not only fills us, but, uh, but that which we can give away to someone else. The power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus enabled him to love day in and day out. And as we look to him and call on him, that same spirit that gave life to him fills us, makes us new, and enables us to live and to love others in the same way. So Mary concludes here. She says, I believe the greatest gift we also can give is our life, day in and day out. That the Lord's love within us compels us to keep moving, to keep forgiving, to keep hoping, to keep dreaming, and to keep engaging those around us doing all we can to give the goodness of God away. Just as Jesus gave his life, we can still let him give life through us day in and day out. Do you need that sense of life from the Lord today? We're going to pray. We're going to ask that the Lord would come and fill us afresh. And that as we engage with people that we come across, we don't know their story. We don't always know what they're going through. Sometimes we get glimpses and, glimpses and pieces of that, but often we don't always know. But may the Lord enable us to give away his love with every person we encounter. May he fill us up so that we in turn can share his love with others. With that thought, let's turn to the Lord and ask him to do that very thing in us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We hear the words of John written here. We understand, Lord, as we read them, that the way we can truly know what love is, is to look at Jesus and what he has done for all of us. The power of his sacrifice, the power of his life as he lived it. Lord, we turn to you. We confess you as our Lord and our Savior. We cast our, our hopes and dreams onto you, and we ask that you would come and fill us with your presence. Not only that we might experience your eternal life and the peace and joy that you intend for us, but that like a sponge that soaks up water, may we in turn soak you up and so that every person that rubs up against us might also experience your love and goodness. Empower us, Lord, we pray, to live lives of service, giving love away and seeing the world made a better place, one encounter at a time, one person at a time. We receive from you by your spirit in this moment your love, that we may share it with others. Thanks for hearing us as we pray. Thanks for being our hope and our security. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. What a great verse for us today. May we ever act on it. Trust the Lord and let him work through you. His love indeed makes all the difference. So good to spend this moment with you here at Friendship Village. We show these kind of videos uh, every day, three times a day. This video will air at 4.30 in the afternoon on our in-house channel, channel 2493. It'll repeat at 8 o'clock this evening and then once again, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. But we also make these available online and uh, you can find them on our YouTube page. Simply go to you, uh, youtube.com, the backslash, at, the at symbol there, FVC Chaplain, like Friendship Village Chesterfield, FVC Chaplain. And not only will you find these encouraging word videos, you'll see um, under the live uh, stream tab, recordings of all our Bible studies, memorials, um, Sunday services, and more. You can also find these encouraging word videos on my own page. Simply type in encouraging words with Burt Campbell in your computer, and you'll see hundreds of these videos on YouTube. Some on the Friendship Village YouTube page, many of them on my own. Either way, feel free to share them with others. If you're watching online, you can subscribe to these videos and uh, receive new ones in, you know, or notice of new ones in your YouTube feed. If you simply click on the circle right here to subscribe, and you can click on the box below to see many in our past history. So good to be with you today. Be encouraged in the Lord, and we will see you 